In this video, I'll be explaining the different market dynamics affecting the three main construction framing softwood lumber 2x4 prices across North America. Hello again, everyone. Keta Kosman, publisher of Madison's Lumber Reporter. We are a price guide newsletter that goes out to industry since 1952 based in Vancouver, British Columbia, and we track North America construction framing softwood lumber prices, FOB mill or mill gate price. And today I'm going to talk specifically about the three main benchmark construction framing lumber uh, commodity prices, which is Western spruce, pine fir, KD, two by four, number two and better, Eastern spruce, same, and Southern yellow pine on the east side. And so, just real quick for those of you who don't know, KD means kiln dried. These are all grades, right? Like lumber is graded. Uh, number two and better is construction framing. It meets the building code. So number three, utility, is used for concrete forming or other purposes uh, not into housing. Number four, economy, is used like for railway ties, furring strips, stuff like that. And so, the reason that I'm going to be speaking about the uh, Western Spruce, which comes out of British Columbia, Alberta, Washington State, Oregon, and a little bit out of Idaho. Eastern Spruce, which comes out of Quebec and New York State. And Southern Yellow Pine, which has three regions, but we're going to focus on the east side because that's the highest volume. All of them. Those are the three by far highest volume manufactured and sold and used across North America. And so they're considered the benchmark. Generally speaking, when something happens with those prices, other species and other grades, those prices will change as well. So they're like really the market leader. And while I do in my commentaries, not in the dashboard to the customers, but in my commentaries that I speak about Western Spruce the most, because traditionally that is the basket. And so recently, in more recent years, it has come to light that Southern Pine lumber manufacturing volumes are either matching or at somewhat close to uh, Western Spruce, which never used to be the case before. However, that's a little bit not comparing apples to apples because like I said, there's three regions west, central, and east for the southern pine. So to really, if you want to compare apples to apples, you would have to say all of the southern pine versus all of the spruce pine fir, so east and west. That would be British Columbia, Alberta, and Quebec manufacturing put together, right? Comparing all of southern pine with just western spruce, no, that's not comparing apples to apples. Comparing east side southern pine to western spruce and then also having eastern spruce in there these are now comparable manufacturing comparable uh, cohesiveness within themselves as a region and compar comparable application use in the marketplace a home builder in texas can order from any of these regions so they can ask a mill or a wholesaler in the U.S. East, South, or in Quebec, uh, Quebec or New York, or in the West. What are those prices? What can they get for that? I'll call you back, etc. Someone in Winnipeg, they're not going to order Southern Pine to come across the border. I mean, there is Southern Pine wood on occasion in Canada, but generally speaking, like we don't, Canada doesn't even have enough customers for the wood that we make as it is. Canadian housing starts are 10% of what US is, right? So I can talk about the uh, ratio of the volume of data. I have spoken about it before, but generally speaking, a very high proportion of Canadian wood is exported. And a lot of that goes into the US. And the US is a net importer because there is more US housing starts than there are uh, tree uh, manufacturing, there, than there are wood processing, okay? So let's look real quick at some of these graphs and I'll explain to you, and this will be in a historical context, like what 
those prices were doing in relation to each other from 2006 to 2017 when U.S. housing was down so low and then over that ridiculous time of incredible price volatility and unprecedented highs uh, for those two and a half years during the COVID and the atmospheric river and the uh, transportation issues here in British Columbia. Since then, from 2022 until now, what are those uh, prices doing against each other? Because in each of those regions that I'm talking about, the business model has changed. The process of manufacturing, the ability to access fiber, all of these things have changed in the last five years, in the last 15 years. Um, so let's look at some graphs and then I'll come back with a little bit more. So these graphs are generated by the Madison's dashboard that my customers have a login to. They are able to compare up to five different commodity prices against each other. Here I've chosen those benchmarks, Western Spruce, Eastern Spruce, Southern Pine on the east side, two by four. And the graph starts in July of 2015. If you look closely there, the yellow line, the Southern Pine, you'll notice that in the middle of 2018, when uh, the market was moving a little bit, that Southern Pine price did rise higher than the Western Spruce. Whereas during 2016, when the market was really soft, those prices were lower. And that's what I mean about customers being able to switch depending on what kind of deal they can get, the relationships, and what is their need of construction that they're going to be using the wood for. And now we're zoomed in more to uh, from 2019 to present. And again, you see the pink line is the Western Spruce and the blue line is the Eastern Spruce. Those prices are toggling back and forth, one higher, one lower. There in April of 2020, that Western Spruce dro price dropped quite a bit lower than the others. And then, of course, we had that big run up. We're going to start ignoring that now as the... Uh, 2020 to 2022 super volatility and extremely high prices that situation is behind us and we're now moving forward into what is the next sort of normal or what are the new market dynamics now that we've come out of those big changes to society and so now here we are it's sort of more into the present this graph is the two-year rolling monthly averages of those prices and quite soon within the next few weeks the scale will uh, moderate down getting rid of those extreme highs as you can see of the 1400 on the top left there and so we'll be able to have a better idea of seeing what happened in early 2022 till now in the middle of 2022, when the mortgage rates started to increase, things flattened out quite a bit. That's just a fact. Now, if you look closely again at that yellow line, the Southern Pine that I've been showing you, and see how one year ago, April 2023, and then into July, how that price popped up higher and then lower in comparison to the others. And again, this is a supply-demand issue uh, with the dynamics of the marketplace. What do the uh, suppliers, the producers, the reloads, the wholesalers try to put as their asking price in comparison to what the customers push back with their counter offers? This table is really interesting. It gives a very good view of where we are right now with the price compared to what was the previous high and then the previous low. So as I was saying, you know, in uh, 2015 and 2016, that's when the prices were the lowest uh, if you took, you know, the past 20 years. And prior to the uh, changes to society with COVID, in 2018, June, those were the highs. That was the all-time high. So if you're looking at the second line, Western Spruce, $443 was an all-time high, never seen before until that time. And now I would consider the market soft. I would consider this price that we have right now at 452, it's a low. The reason for that, the cost of production at the mills has essentially doubled. Okay, and so now some of the reasons for why these prices change, why do they change differently from each other? The access to fiber in British Columbia has been reduced significantly. We had the, well, the Pacific Northwest in general. Uh, we had the mountain pine beetle. 
which uh, there was an increase in manuf there was an increase in harvesting immediately during and following the pine beetle infestation, which has now run its course. We were not able to salvage all of those trees, and then we have fire because this is essentially dehydrated, you know, cured wood poles sticking up all over the landscape, whether it's in a timber supply area or not. The parks uh, have been just as badly hit with the pine beetle and the beetle kill uh, as the merchantable timber basket. So at this point, we are actually in a period of regrowth. We had replanting and then there's natural regeneration. A lot of the forests in Canada are naturally regenerating and there are trees coming back. It takes 80 years for a lodgepole pine tree to reach maturity. So we've got three generations of people before we can start harvesting what is coming back now. So the annual allowable cut is dropping. And this is one of the reasons why, this is a main reason why that and the duty are the two main reasons why the large Canadian uh, sawmill companies uh, have been investing in uh, manufacturing in the U.S. South. The U.S. South has kind of the opposite problem. It is a cultivated forest. Uh, what you would see in Germany or Japan, you know, many centuries already of uh, people having, uh, doing plantation, doing silviculture, doing fumigation, irrigation, uh, thinning which doesn't really happen that much in Canada. Um, and so then what happened there is a lot of those forests, so the southern pine, uh, generally the uh, species is the loblolly pine. And that between the uh, improvements to the manufacturing and the silviculture practice is down to a rotation of 35 years. And a lot of those came to maturity just there uh, a couple of years ago. So during when we had the COVID and prices were going nuts uh, for lumber and other things, log prices in the U.S. South did not increase when you would expect that they would because demand was up. Why? Because there was a glut of timber that had to be harvested that was coming into the mills. And we're still in that situation now. So there's... Things in the background for people who follow lumber for different reasons, if they're ec economists or uh, academics, um, in the background that aren't necessarily as obvious as what is the U.S. housing starts, what are interest rates, what's GDP doing, all that kind of stuff. And the timber supply is a huge part of it. Uh, in Quebec, well, they had an issue, but it's been a while. It was 2004 that it ha was determined by their chief forester that there was too much uh, harvesting going on. And over from 2004 and another couple of years later, the allowable cut in Quebec was reduced by 40%. But it's been a long time. And, okay, so Western spruce and Eastern spruce is essentially the same thing. However, there's a shorter growing season in, Eastern in the Eastern part of the continent because of the cold winters. And so it takes longer for those trees to grow. And so there is a higher value put on the timber than there is here in British Columbia. And also the costs at the mills is a different structure in Quebec than it is here in BC. The energy cost and the employment costs are the two main, apart from buying the logs, uh, that the mills have to pay. And so Eastern Spruce is always on a premium to Western Spruce regardless. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope those graphs help to explain a little bit why do I put those in that little chart that you see every, uh, if you look every time, every week? And again, this is just a small selection of the full uh, price list that we do every Friday. And so here on YouTube, if you like what you see, click subscribe so that you will be notified when we make another video. Click like so this video will be get, re get recommended to other viewers. And if it really interests you more, what it is that we do in the full scope, not just these little snapshots. In the caption here is a link to the website. You can fill out the form, order a sample, subscribe, we'll send you an invoice, and you will get the full data every week and you don't have to wait uh, until I have time to make a YouTube or the two week lag that we put that small snapshot on the website.